Hey, this is Shane Point to the Word. Uh, this will be part eight of our Catholics Christian. Um, so today I want to talk about the Eucharist, and that kind of like ties together with penance as well a little bit. Um, at least one of the portions of what I'm going to talk about does. Um, so the Eucharist, I looked up on like dictionary.com, and it says that um, Eucharist, the Christian ceremony, of course, you know, Christian, they're you know, since Vatican II, now they, you know, basically call themselves Christians. Uh, so that's, you know, a deception there. So the Christian ceremony commemorating the Last Supper, in which bread and wine are consecrated and consumed. The consecrated elements, especially the bread, um, so it gives, like, examples of, we went to an early morning Eucharist, or he was wheeled close to the altar to receive the Eucharist. So, you know, it says... You know, talking about, like, you know, Last Supper, so, you know, an individual could be like, oh, that kind of sounds like communion. And that's where, you know, the deception is, and, you know, it's basically a counterfeit. Um, so, you know, I've heard, like, you know, Catholics say, like, oh, yeah, you know, we, we do communion. It, it interchange, like, communion and Eucharist, you know. So it's basically a counterfeit of, you know, the truth. Um and I want to talk about uh, penance a little bit too. So from Catechism 1414, so 1414, as sacrifice, the Eucharist is also offered in reparation for the sins of the living and the dead. So, you know, again, we're going back, you know, you can offer it to living or dead. Um, and to obtain spiritual or temporal benefits from, from God. And then 1415, I'm just continuing, uh, the CCC 1415. Anyone who desires to receive Christ in Eucharistic communion, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, they put them all together. So anyone who desires to receive Christ in Eucharistic communion must be in the state of grace. Anyone aware of having sinned mortally must not receive communion without having received absolution in the sacrament of penance. So, like, it, it's crazy because, like, in true Christianity, um, you know, it, it gets warped because you're, it's basically saying that, hey, you know, you, you need this, uh, you know, for salvation. And so, in real communion, it's like a you know, not celebration, but like, you know, do this in remembrance of me kind of thing. And so, um, that's, that would be the difference between, you know, Eucharist and communion. Um, and it says right here, you must be in a state of grace. So it's like, I don't know, it, 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 it almost, it conflicts because like, you have to be in that state of grace to be saved. So, it's like in order, to, in order to get salvation, you have to be saved, kind of. Like, it, it gets really messed up. And, you know, there's, you begin to see the contradictions in, you know, Catholicism. And so, you know, the Eucharist is needed. Like, you need that um, in order to be saved. Like, you need those benefits of God. And, you know, I mean, like I just said, in the last one, as sacrifice, the Eucharist is also offered in reparation for the sins of the living and the dead. So you need the Eucharist, but you need, also need to be in a state of grace. So it, 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 it's crazy. And that's where, you know, the works come in. Like, you, you, like, that's how they can, you know, offer this, you know, solution. Like, you know, it's, it's a fake solution. Like, you have to be saved in order to get salvation. It's like, what? And so, moving on, um, this is in 1410, so a few paragra uh, paragraphs before, so CCC 1410, and this is more or less talking about, like, the Eucharist and, like, what, you know, happens. So, you know, like, in true Christianity, you know, the communion is, like, remembrance of what, you know, Jesus Christ has already done. And so, um, in 1410... Uh, catechism it says it is Christ himself the eternal high priest of the new covenant who acting through the ministry of 
the priest offers a Eucharistic sacrifice, and it is the same Christ really present under the species of bread and wine who is the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice. So that's basically, I mean, I'm, you know, if you've ever heard about Catholicism before or, you know, studied it, you know, it says, you know, basically, you know, in layman's terms, you know, Jesus is in the bread kind of thing. So, and, like, that's, that's just wrong. And, it, like, true Christianity already says, you know, he already did this for us. Like, he isn't... Um, you know, he, he doesn't teleport back and forth to, you know, however many, you know, Catholic mass are, you know, are being held, you know, per day and in, you know, any town, any country in the whole world. You know what I mean? Like, it, Jesus is not, you know, beaming back and forth. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And, like, I really want to clarify that because, like, once you, you know, start thinking about that, it's like, this is kind of crazy. Like, what? And, you know, I really want to emphasize that. And, you know, in the Bible it says that, you know, when Jesus, um, like, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, he went to be seated at the right hand of the Father, you know, he went up in the clouds. And, you know, it says that, you know, all the men were looking up, and then, you know, two men, like two angels came and, you know, or, you know, basically saying, like I'm paraphrasing, you know, maybe I can bring the scripture up, you know, later um, in like another video, uh, Lord willing. But, you know, like the, the angels say, you know, why are you gazing, you know, up? Like, you know, in a like manner, you know, Jesus will return. So it, it, he's not returning in a piece of bread. He's, you know, I'm trying not to, you know, make fun. I, I like, I really do you know, want this point to get through, like, I don't want to be that person who's like, ha oh, ha you know, they think Jesus is a piece of bread, or, you know, I, I don't, I really don't want to do that, like, I've, I've had that mindset before, and I, I want to be as, you know, polite to Catholics, because they are people, you know, if they're breathing right now, they can be saved, and so, I really want to get that point across, um, but yeah, like, you know, they say that, you know, Jesus is in the sacrifice, that he is, you know, who is the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice. And so, like, they, they say that he's present. You know, it says really present under the species of bread and wine. And so I really want to make that point clear, um, you know, that he's not. That's, you know, and like I said in another video, maybe I can, you know, you know, bring that forth to the scripture because there's a couple of them that, you know, I could point to, even Jesus himself saying, you know, stuff like that, like, you know, if any man come in my name, you know, don't receive him kind of thing, like, you know, and, you know, I can probably touch on that next time, Lord willing, um, but yeah, the one last quote I want to, uh, you know, talk about, and this is probably the first quote I haven't used, um, in a catechism, um, but I want to bring it up because there's this person named John O'Brien. And so, I think he's, uh, I think he's passed now, but he wrote in a book called Faith of Millions. He said, when the priest pronounces the tremendous words of consecration, he reaches up into the heavens. So we're just talking about consecration, you know, earlier when we, when I defined you know, what the definition of Eucharist is. You know, it said a consecration. I'll oh, actually go back. Yeah, so it says, you know, the consecrated elements, especially the bread. So, yeah, I just want to bring that back up while that's relevant. So it says, uh, this is John O'Brien in the book of Faith of Millions. He wrote, when the priest pronounces the tremendous words of consecration, he reaches up to the heavens brings Christ down to his throne, or I'm sorry, brings Christ down from his throne and places him upon our altar to be offered upon again as the victim for the sins of man. So I'll read that again because I kind of stumbled. So when a priest pronounces the tremendous words of consecration, he reaches up into the heavens, brings Christ down from his throne, and places him upon our altar to be or offered up again as the victim for the sins of man. And it continues, It is a power greater than 
that of monarchs and emperors. It is greater than that of saints and angels, greater than that of the seraphim and cherubim. Indeed, it is greater even than the power of the Virgin Mary, well blessed. And I'll continue. Um, while the Blessed Virgin was the human agency by which Christ became incarnate a single time, the, pri uh, the priest brings Christ down from heaven and renders him present on our altar as the eternal victim for the sins of man. Not once, but a thousand times. The priest speaks, and lo, Christ, the eternal and omnipotent God, bows his head in humble obedience to the priest's command. And so, maybe our Catholic friends are familiar with that and can relate to it, because a lot of these things that John O'Brien wrote, like, you know, you can, you know, kind of go to the catechism and say, hey, you know, like, this is where I got that from, that's where I got that from. They call Jesus the victim. Um, I'm sure many true Christians would argue, you know, Jesus Christ is the victor. Um, you know, he, he said it is finished, and he said that, you know, like, I, I, I give my life, you know, as a ransom. And, you know, you know, no one, you know, would take Jesus' life. Like, he, he you know, he laid it down himself. And, you know, that's a verse that he said, you know, greater love had no man than this, that man laid down his life for his friends. And I really, you know, want Catholics to know that, you know, this isn't the true Jesus that's being talked about. Um, and Jesus said that, you know, he, you know, gave up the ghost. Like, he, he you know what I mean? Like, and, and that means, that's like, you know, King James Version. That means he died. Like, he did, you know what I mean? Like, he died like he did that. Um, and so... He, he he's he was sacrificed once for our sins. It wasn't you know a thousand times, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Like you know you can say that you know on a particular mass, like you know Jesus would basically be like teleporting you know a thousand times you know, and obviously now more I mean, a thousand times. I I don't know the figure, but it's probably you know in a week's time. So. Yeah, I just really want to get that material to you guys. Um, I pray that souls will be saved. I pray that, you know, our Catholic friends and family, you know, please keep praying for them. I, I pray that they would be saved. I pray that you guys have a great day. Bye.